whole info person this is Anton, and once again we have a discovery of a planet that shouldn't exist. A planet known as LHS 3154b, orbiting what's known as an M-type star or a red dwarf. And what makes this particular star system unusual is the fact that the planet, in terms of the size and the mass, is just a little bit too big for this particular star. Compared to a lot of other red dwarfs and compared to other similar star systems that technically represent the most common star systems out there, in terms of the size and mass ratio between the star and the planet, it just really makes no sense whatsoever. Here's for example how Earth compares to the Sun, and here's how this planet compares to its star. Way, way more massive, way larger than anything we expect in this type of a star system. And so let's talk a little bit more about what's happening here, how this planet most likely formed, and how this compares to other discoveries from previous studies, as well as the problems this sort of creates. First of all, where exactly is this, and what do we know about the star? Well, like so many other red dwarfs, this is just a low-mass star that in essence represents the most average star in the galaxy. It's about 9 times less massive than the Sun, and is therefore expected to only have terrestrial planets in its orbit, kind of similar to red dwarfs we already know. For example, the famous TRAPPIST-1 system that contains 7 Earth-like terrestrial planets in its orbit. And these systems are extremely common, they actually seem to be everywhere, but because they're usually the smallest stars in the galaxy, Despite their numerous numbers, they're still kind of difficult to study, and there are still a lot of mysteries about them. And that actually includes the mysteries of how they form planets. It's assumed that it's very similar, kind of what we usually see around other stars, with some kind of a protoplanetary disk, where different over densities eventually start forming larger and larger objects, turning into planets, but because they're so small, usually red dwarfs are just very difficult to study. But that's of course just an assumption based on observations from other stars. Nevertheless, relatively recently, scientists wanted to find out, so, okay, how many of these stars could potentially have giant planets? Basically planets that are not terrestrial. And so here they managed to collect data for every major red dwarf star in the 50 light year radius from planet Earth. And specifically focusing on single stars, not binary stars, not active stars, in total discovering 200 various objects that could then be analyzed with a lot more detail. And so these 200 objects were then observed for 3 years. This was done to determine what sort of planets would be orbiting here and to try to find as many as possible. And in the end they discovered that pretty much none of them seemed to contain giant planets. Yet they all contain terrestrial planets, similar in size and mass to planet Earth. There were maybe two potential candidates with something a little bit larger, possibly some kind of an ice giant and possibly something similar to Neptune, but because these planets were on the outskirts of the star system, essentially past the so-called snow line, it was a little bit difficult to confirm these planets, and it was also a little bit more difficult to study them or to try to understand how they formed. Either way, if we accept these two potential detections, it kind of presents us with approximately 1.5% chance for a red dwarf to have some kind of a Neptune-like world. But these ice giants can only exist on the outskirts, beyond the snow line, where there is enough icy material to start accumulating more gas and to form something a little bit larger. Much closer to the star, in the inner region, we don't expect anything like this at all. Everything here has to be terrestrial and possibly similar to Mars, Venus and Earth. Not like in terms of conditions, just in terms of composition and overall density. Yet this discovery really makes no sense. This planet is way too close and it seems to be approximately 13 masses of planet Earth, basically making it some kind of a Neptune-like or Uranus-like object. And so at this mass, it's most likely a gas planet. But it's unlikely to be an ice giant because it's very close to the star. A single orbit here is approximately 3.7 days, making this a relatively hot planet with very likely superheated atmosphere. Here this was discovered by using what's known as radial velocity, when essentially the scientists look at the star and they notice that it's sort of wobbling and produces redshift and blue shift effects with very specific periodicity. This can only be the result of a massive planet in its orbit. And here the mass was determined at 13 masses of planet Earth. This was also happening every 3.7 days, making this the orbital period. Interestingly, this technique doesn't actually work around Sun-type stars, because usually planets here are much, much farther away. So, for example, planet Earth does not pull on the Sun enough for us to be able to see it in this way. I mean, once we have more powerful telescopes, it's going to be possible, but just not yet. But for M-type stars, this is definitely a possibility, and a lot of planets have been discovered the same way. The problem is that the planet here was pulling on the star way too much. 
making the red shifts and the blue shifts much, much higher than anything we've seen before. Here you can actually see that the star in this case changes its velocity by approximately 23 meters per second every 3.7 days. That is a pretty substantial change that can only be caused by something very, very massive. And so this planet is definitely there. But why is it there? Or how is it there? These types of stars should not be able to form anything similar so close to the star. Previous detections were preliminary and always on the outskirts. This is practically hugging the star. And in modern astronomy, red dwarfs are not expected to have large enough planetary disk or even have enough solid materials to form a planetary core that can then become a gas giant. So either this particular star had a much larger planetary disk, possibly 10 times as massive and 10 times as large, which would then need to be explained in some other way because we should be seeing more planets in this case and possibly a lot more stuff, or the more likely explanation is that maybe despite all of the protoplanetary disks we've seen so far, and despite confirmations for planetary formation from various studies, there's at least one other way planets can form that we didn't know about before. In other words, maybe giant planets can form in some other way we never knew about. Possibly from some kind of a gravitational instability and some kind of a collapse of material into a large planet, or possibly through some kind of a, I guess, binary-like system, where instead of two stars you have a star and a large planet. Or possibly we don't really know. Actually, nobody knows right now, this is a new mystery. Right now, all the planetary simulations and different assumptions about how this formed do not explain everything and don't really make a lot of sense. This star should definitely not have this planet, and this planet does not belong in the location where it currently is. And though it's possible that maybe this type of planet could be captured by the star, in this case because it orbits so close to the star and seems to have a relatively perfect circular orbit, once again it just doesn't make sense. A captured gas giant would be somewhere on the outskirts or would have an extremely eccentric orbit that would look very different from what we see. And so definitely quite a lot of questions to tackle and quite a lot of mysteries to try to answer. How, why, and what is it doing here? But that's of course one of many mysteries scientists are trying to answer about M-type stars. These stars are so common yet we know so little about them because they're so difficult to see. And we obviously know even less about their planetary formation or what sort of planets they even form. But because of systems like TRAPPIST-1 where seven terrestrial planets seem to be in orbit, understanding these planets and how they form would actually help us understand if life can exist somewhere else and if one day we could discover some kind of a habitable planet around these very common yet very unusual stars. Okay, that's unfair. These are not unusual stars. They're actually super, super common stars. It's the sun that's unusual. And you can learn more about that particular topic in one of the videos in the description. And you can also find a few more videos about strange exoplanets or planets that shouldn't exist that we've discussed previously. Anyway, once we know more about what's happening in this star system, and once the scientists figure out how this planet formed, or if it's actually something unusual, or if it's something that involves some kind of a really strange planet or formation, I'll definitely come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. On that note, check out some of the previous videos and previous studies in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.